Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, and uh, guys, very serious breaking stories here going on. Uh, RT is reporting that the UK uses museum tanks, civilians, to sim launching an invasion of World War III in Estonia. That's something they did. They tried to bring it out to be what they consider to be uh, a realistic look here. Uh, on the battlefield here, and uh, of course they're using the T-72 tanks there, uh, as you can see in the pictures here on your screen there. Also, the um, obviously the blue uniform, kind of the blue camo that Russia is using in their battlefield uh, as well. And they were using AK-47s. Uh, now, I just thought, you know, to me it's just very provocative for the European Union to be doing this type of action right now. Um, you know, just make it look like Russia is the most aggressive nation on planet Earth when clearly President Putin has not been a, an aggressive nation. Uh, he's been falsely accused for a lot of things, but he's definitely not been an aggressive nation. Uh, but nonetheless, the Obama administration, the European Union, many, many of the NATO allies are trying to make it look as if he is. As if he is the one that started the, uh, the coup in Ukraine that when Yanukovych was uh, president. But yet it was Yanukovych that called President Putin to come and rescue him from a organized coup there that clearly had the hallmarks of uh, the CIA all over it uh, with a bunch of neo-Nazi thugs that had been shipped into there in order to be able to overthrow the country uh, the way that they did. Very, very sad indeed the, the, the way the events went there in Ukraine. And... Uh, but it is what it is. Uh, continuing on, I'd like to take you to Russian Insider here. Uh, Russian Insider, despite reproachment, Turkey, Russia, relations remain uneasy over Syria. We've seen several different articles that have come out where Putin, after having the phone call with uh, President Erdogan, seemingly he backed down from his rhetoric against uh, President Bashar al-Assad over Syria. But one must wonder whether or not it is really uh, genuine to begin with. So the Russian insider decided to take the story a little deeper, and they write in here, while a year has passed since Turkey uh, shot down a Russian jet in Syria, and while a few months have passed since the beginning of the rapprochement between both countries that includes cooperation in Syria and cooperation in the field of energy and bilateral ties remain uneasy, a situation that largely owes its existence to the still lingering disagreement over Syria, particularly the future of Assad and the dual role of Turkey happens to be playing there. On the one hand, it has set up its own troops to supposedly fight the Islamic State, which we know is a bunch of hogwash. All they've done is gone in there and killed Kurds off. And anyone that is actually a supporter of President Bashar al-Assad, it clearly, it is clearly um, a spectacle uh, at, at, at the very least, in my opinion, there. Um, they have no regards whatsoever for President uh, Assad, and yet uh, President Putin has been backing President Bashar al-Assad there. And what can you expect? What can you expect? It says, as much as while Turkey's rhetorically respects Syria's territorial integrity, uh, it has still created a safe zone inside Syria in the name of creating a shield uh, against the Islamic State incursions into Turkey and is pushing to bring more of the Syrian territory under its direct control. So there is no respect to sovereignty. It is clearly uh, uh, in the interest of NATO, I might add. Uh, it is clearly against the wishes of President Bashar al-Assad, who has called Syri uh, the, excuse me, the uh, Turkish presence in his country an invasion and I'm just wondering when uh, President Putin is going to do something about this. I, I, I would oust him. I wouldn't even put up with it. I would just oust him completely out of the country. Um, another very serious article that I got here on Zero Hedge, uh, written by Tyler Durden here. This was really blew me away, especially when you look at this from a video format. This is smuggling immigrants into Europe on an industrial scale. According to Tyler here, he writes in here for two months using... Uh, MaritimeTraffic.com, we have been monitoring the movements of ships owned by a couple of NGOs and using the data from data.unhcr.org, we have kept track of the daily arrivals of African immigrants in Italy. 
It turned out we were witness of a big scam in an illegal human traffic operation. Now, they have kind of, uh, Tyler and, and the group there that put the video together, they, they kind of put this to where you can see it and moving like in fast time. And I want you to really be able to see this here, what, what they have done. Awesome job here. Uh, they've sped up the, the imagery here so that you can see this a little bit better. And um, let me just kind of turn the volume down a little bit on this right here. And as you can see that on your screen, it's just amazing. It's back and forth, back and forth. Ships are meeting a bunch of smaller boats down there uh, just off of uh, the, the, the coast there of northern Africa. They go down and then they go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, and it is a trafficking situation. And I know that they claim that there's a lot of these people being rescued at, sh at sea, but where are they really being rescued at? It's right there off of the coast itself. I mean, it's just amazing to me. Uh, and, and just, you know, I, I'm amazed at the work that they did on this, and I, I just applaud their, their efforts there to expose uh, this trafficking uh, of, the, of, of refugees, or, or, or maybe in this case here, I don't even know if we could call this refugees, because um, when you're sending ships all the way down to pick the people up and then to bring them all the way back up so you can smuggle them into Italy, then there's a conspiracy going on, and the conspiracy is against the European people as well. Very much like what um, uh, Merkel, Chancellor Merkel, did in Germany when she brought in the millions of refugees to destabilize the German uh, economy, to destabilize the German society, and to bring Western Europe along with France, uh, with, under Holland's uh, rule there, it has brought them near to co uh, financial collapse. And it's only going to get worse. I can't see anything get any better. Uh, at any rate there, just want to let you know these things as we're seeing them as they, as they unfold. And also just a reminder to let you uh, or make you aware of uh, we're in the process of a couple of things here on Israeli News Live. We've been updating our um, websites, repairing the problems that, that people have been having, especially um, people that have not been able to uh, contribute that wanted to contribute. We, we are working on that. That all should be repaired here in the next couple of days. I'll update you when that happens. Um, we did get, by the way, and let me just share this with you. It's really exciting for me to see this. Uh, if you go to Israeli News uh, Live dot co dot il, we have waited for this for a long time. Uh, but our Israeli after all, I'm oh, Stephen Benun. You're watching his turn that guy off for a minute. <laughs> hey, I'm wearing the same shirt. Uh, I guess that's a European culture, right? Uh, at any rate. Um, we have been able to get our Israeli news uh, live.co.il, our Israeli uh, uh, domain name, up and running finally after I've been trying to get this going now for, for, for over a year. Uh, but we finally found a very good web guy that can do all this and getting things up and moving a bit along with that. So very happy to, 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 to be able to report that that is happening. We're also in the process, guys, uh, just a reminder as well, our lease where we live is uh, up at the end of the year here. So we have been working on trying to uh, move our, our office so that we have a place to actually continue to do our reporting. And we're almost done with that, but it's quite a bit of an endeavor when you're trying to move everything that you have there and making sure that I can still work from home um, and yet also from the office as well. So, and we have been hacked, another issue, I've mentioned that before, our web guy really found where the issues were at, and he said, yes, we definitely have been uh, compromised, he said, on a very professional level. So, these things are being uh, taken care of, and of course, I spent nearly a week being sick as a dog, and, uh, but by the grace of God, coming out of that. So, in the next few days here, we'll have things up and going back uh, the way they were. And we're also, I think, going to step it up a notch here. I think that we might be able to put on the screen and behind. Now, when I work out of the house, 
I have the little black thing you see here in the background with the TV screen here. We continue to do that. In our office, though, uh, I've always had a uh, projector. I've gotten this a uh, couple of years, I know about five years ago, uh, a projector where you can project onto the wall. And uh, I think we can adjust our iris on there. And what that would allow us to do is when we're recording, it looked like you'd have a giant screen TV on the background, but in reality, it's just a projection from our uh, projector uh, that we bought about five years ago there. So if we're able to pull that off, I think it's really going to help for those of you that want to be able to see the screen. I hate doing it like this here on the uh, computer here where you just see a little square there, but to where then we can switch it and show you in behind us there. Um, if you're looking at a document or whatever, it'll be much easier for you guys to be able to read. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. God bless you. And, uh, and I apologize for not getting our Shabbat message out as of yet there. I was sick the entire time during that time. But uh, I do have some things on my heart I want to share with you, uh, those of you that watch on Danoon Institute. Don't forget, S. Danoon Institute is where these do appear now. Uh, we will still continue prophetic updates here on Israeli News Live. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.